The art world is no stranger to controversy and intrigue, but one painting has made headlines for a very different reason. Meet Flaming June. With its fiery hues and intense energy, this masterpiece has captivated audiences for over a century. But what makes this painting so perilous? And why did it nearly vanish from the surface of the earth? Join us as we uncover the secrets of Flaming June and its brush with disaster. In the world of art, value is often determined by a number of factors. The artist, the era, the subject matter, and of course, the quality of the work itself. And yet, there are some pieces that seem to defy all expectations. Flaming June by Sir Frederick Layton is one such work. Despite its current status as a priceless masterpiece, this painting was once practically worthless. In fact, it was abandoned for decades, forgotten behind a false panel of chimney mantle, stripped of its opulent frame and tossed unceremoniously into the back of a junk shop. It's hard to believe that a painting as beautiful as Flaming June could have suffered such a fate. With its vibrant colors and graceful lines, it seemed to exude a sense of luxury and elegance. But the truth is, the painting was once considered little more than a curiosity, a relic of a bygone era that had fallen out of favor with collectors and critics alike. For years, Flaming June languished in obscurity, passed over by countless art dealers and rejected by scores of would-be buyers. Even the hands of Andrew Lloyd Webber's grandmother came close to taking possession of the painting, only for fate to intervene and keep it out of her grasp. And yet, despite all this, Flaming June endured. Perhaps it was the painting's sheer beauty that kept it from being forgotten completely. Or maybe it was the fact that Leighton himself was a great man of influence, a prominent figure in Victorian society who had founded the Grosvenor Gallery and championed in the work of other artists. Whatever the reason, Flaming June managed to survive, even as other paintings fell by the wayside. But how could a painting so captivating and vibrant suffer such an ignominious fate? It all begins with a young woman named Dorothy Dean, born Ada Alice Poulin in 1859. Dorothy didn't have the privilege of wealth or connections, but what she did have was an unbreakable spirit and a fierce determination to make her dreams a reality. With her sights set on a career in acting, Dorothy turned to modeling to support herself financially. And boy, did she have the looks for it. Standing tall with a flawless complexion, symmetrical features, and cascading auburn locks, Dorothy was the epitome of classic beauty. It was in 1879 when fate intervened, and Dorothy's past crossed with that of Friedrich Leighton, the esteemed president of the Royal Academy. The story goes that as Leighton caught a glimpse of the 19-year-old beauty exiting a nearby studio, he was immediately smitten and knew he had to have her sit for one of his paintings. As we delve deeper into the relationship between Frederick Leighton and Dorothy Dean, it becomes clear that their connection was anything but simple. Despite never tying the knot, Leighton's friend referred to Dorothy as his wife, a testament to the intensity of their relationship. But what was it about this young model turned actress that captivated the esteemed artist? And what was the nature of their complex bond? While we may never know the full story, one thing is for certain. Leighton spared no expense when it came to Dorothy's artistic pursuits. He financed her acting and dictation class, even going so far as to recommend that she change her name to something more theatrical. And it seemed that Dorothy was more than happy to play the role of Leighton's muse, after all. It was through him that she was able to pursue her lifelong dream of becoming an actress. As the relationship between Frederick Leighton and Dorothy Dean deepened, so too did the creative fruits of their partnership. Dorothy became Leighton's muse, posing for many of his iconic paintings and cementing her place in art history. But as the story goes, their connection was far from simple, and some have speculated that Leighton's interest in Dorothy may have gone beyond artistic admiration. Critics such as Stephen Jones have posited that Leighton's slightly obsessive and controlling personality may have drawn him to Dorothy, whom he saw as someone he could mold into his ideal woman. It's even been suggested that their relationship was the inspiration for the play Pygmalion, which tells the story of a sculptor who falls in love with his own creation and eventually brings her to life. Now, let's look at the painting itself. In this stunning painting by Frederick Leighton, a woman lounges on a marble bench, basking in the warm glow of the Mediterranean sun. Her rosy cheek seems to radiate heat, and the blooming Olandia flowers nearby remind us that it's the height of summer. Her form-fitting apricot dress hugs every curve, cascading like molten lava over the seat. Her long brown hair swirls together with the red drapery, creating a cozy nest beneath her. 
To her right, the bright blooms of the oleander flowers seem to glow against the deep blue sea, creating a striking contrast of colors. But as beautiful as this scene may be, it's not without its dangers. You see, the same oleander flowers that add a pop of color to the painting are also extremely poisonous, capable of causing serious harm to anyone who dares to touch them. And if that's not enough to make you wary, take a closer look at the woman's posture. Her body almost seems contorted, her limbs twisted in an unnatural position that begs the question, can anyone actually sleep like that? Yeah, probably not. As it turns out, Leighton deliberately squished the woman's body and removed some elements from the original composition. He also shifted the red pole and flowers inward and simplified the golden awning. The devil is in the details after all. Leighton's choice to include Oleanders in Flaming June is certainly intriguing, especially considering his deteriorating health at the time. It's possible that he was contemplating his own mortality and chose to represent it through the flowers. The association between sleep and death in Victorian literature and ancient Greek philosophy adds another layer of depth to the painting. Furthermore, the presence of Oleanders as a symbol of danger adds an element of mystery and intrigue to the woman depicted in the painting. She's not just a beautiful object to be admired, but a potentially dangerous femme fatale. Leighton may have been exploring the idea of the danger inherent in female beauty and the power it can hold over men. Okay, now rewind to the bustling streets of London in the year 1895. It was the grand unveiling of Frederick Leighton's masterpiece, Flaming June, and the critics were absolutely smitten. One collector even hailed it as the most wonderful painting in existence. But as we all know, the higher the climb, the harder the fall. Critics were absolutely enamored with the piece, calling it one of the finest works of Leighton's career. Art collector Samuel Cordauld even went so far as to proclaim it the most wonderful painting in existence. As you can imagine, expectations for the painting were high. Flaming June was initially purchased by William Lucent Thomas for the graphic magazine for a thousand pounds. Then, Leighton's friend Blanche Watney acquired the piece sometime between 1904 and 1906. When Miss Watney died, she passed the painting on to her son, who loaned it to the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford in 1915, where it lived until 1930. By the 1930s, Victorian art was out and modern avant-garde works were in. Essentially, if you had Victorian art, you were passé and no one wanted to be passé. Therefore, no one wanted to buy Flaming June. The heirs to the painting were left with a piece of art that was pretty much junk, and that's when the painting vanished without a trace. That is, until a lucky builder stumbled upon it while working in a vacant house. As he went to remove a fake mantelpiece panel, he found Flaming June hidden behind it. He sold it to a junk shop for a measly $60, and the painting sat unsold for years in his store. In a twist of fate, it wasn't until a young Andrew Lloyd Webber stumbled upon the painting and fell in love with it that Flaming Jew finally found a new home. Despite facing resistance from his grandmother, who deemed it Victorian junk, the painting was eventually sold for £2,000 to Louis Ferrier, a millionaire politician and industrialist who founded the Musco de Art de Ponce. In fact, Ferrier was so enamored with the piece that he couldn't sleep the night before the transaction. It seemed that after years of neglect and obscurity, Flaming June had finally found someone who cared. So over the decades, Flaming June went from being highly revered and loved by critics in the late 19th century to being deemed worthless and forgotten in the 20th century. And today, it's considered one of the greatest paintings of all time. Click on one of the videos on the screen right now.